going to begin the meeting and welcome everyone to the July 8th Board of Selectmen meeting. Our meeting is being conducted via Zoom, remote, in, in accordance with Governor Baker's orders. I'm John Jeffries, the Chairman of the Board. With us, Bob Springett. Here. Robin Hunter. Here. Clerk. Chris Dwelly and Kate O'Brien. Mona DeSillo is also with us remotely. Is there anyone else? I can only see the six of us in so far. Is there anyone else, Kate, that's going to be joining or has joined? Okay, great. Thank you. So we have all acknowledged that the meeting is being recorded and we are going to begin the meeting with citizens' comments. Not seeing any citizens' comments, we're going to move directly to item 1.1, discussion of our fiscal 2020 goals and objectives. Um, Chris, we all have, thank you for the drafts that you sent for the 20, 2022 for the uh, re re review of 2021 and of your goals and objectives report from a month ago. Chris, is there anything you'd like to add to this? There's nothing that I'd like to add in addition to the to the documents that, that you have. Robin, comments, questions, anything you'd like to add to these? Um, no, I, I figured we would go over them this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Bob, anything you want to add to these or, or we, we can begin with a review. Would you like to begin by reviewing last year's or would you like to just jump right to the 2022 because it seems we're, they're pretty much in the same order um, of our, the past three years goals, goals and objectives. Um, right, do we want to share them or should we just look at them ourselves? Kate? Do you want to? Just Kate, in case you, people call in, I, I do not see anybody having called in. But. Okay. Kate, do you want to share the FY 2022? I mean, to be honest, I just assume we got it on my computer. Okay. Well, I'm just, you know, people complain if they call in that they don't know what we're looking at. But if they call in, they can't see it. I, what I meant by call in was connect to the, to the <laughs> meeting. Being a wise ass, Robin. Don't, <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't, don't bait. Even early in the morning at 8, 10. <laughs> no, but. Does anyone have it um, right in front of them? I could, I just don't have it in front of me on my screen. So I could let you share my, I could give you permission to share your screen. If you want to show the goals. Yep. Um, okay. I've got being at my office. I've, I've literally have five screens open up. So I, I, I know that's my problem. Too. <laughs> I got to move one to up here. I, I just got to move the screens and then this one to down here. I think that's, what I have to do. Now, now we have your Gmail account. Now you have my Gmail. Yeah, well, he's going to call it up from here, right? There we go. There you go. How's that? That good? I have it on my screen, and I can and it can make it larger, so I can actually read it. So I'm. It's, it's a really good size. I can see both. Perfect. Yeah, technology is a beautiful thing. Uh, okay. For number one, open space and land use, water. Um, we can all read, you know, the suggested a actions. And um, I did just, by the way, on item one, I did listen in yesterday to my second drought management task force. It is unbelievable how long those meetings are. So on this one, 
you know, I think we agreed last last year this time that this was a high priority. Um, and when I'm looking at this, I think it's a sort of strategic objective. Um, and what I was sort of interested interested to talk about for a minute is just the okay. So the idea here is we hire a consultant and then they do work. We have the money to do it, um, but I'm not sure sort of what the what is it a heavy lift or or a light lift or what. So just to say, yeah, okay, hire a consultant and let's start this process. It's very similar to what we did with DPW. And then we'll, they'll come back with recommendations and then we'll, we would uh, sift through the recommendations and presumably go forward. Is well, I think, you, I think what you have to do is spend some time figuring out what the RFP is gonna look like because the report you get is gonna be geared towards that. So there, there are a couple of things here. You know, I think what we're looking for is a strategic plan. So what we need to understand is what the infrastructure is today, uh, what the potential limitations are on that infrastructure, what are other options or potential options um, to alleviate the stress on our current sources. And then, um, and these are decisions that we may not like the answers to. Um, we also need to understand the restrictions on development, if any, based, you know, as it relates to water sources. And then I think we, we have to look at, there's a whole nother area of things we need to look at, uh, such as bylaws, promoting conservation, because, you know, you have one source of water and certainly conservation of that water is going to make, is going to help, um, you know, with respect to supply. And then, you know, what I don't think the town understands is there is a certain segment of the town that's trying to um, conserve water with a subgroup only being those colonial water people, you know, there's 70% of the town isn't on colonial water and they're watering their lawns as well. And we're all using the same aquifer. So, you know, we really need to look at what, us, what if some of the other towns do, done, um, because I think the key here or the baby step, the low hanging fruit is promoting conservation while we're looking at what our other options are. So I, I believe it's a pretty heavy lift, you know, so, and, and what I'm looking for is a strategic plan. Right, so we have two, three, and four address for a number of the things that you talk about, but one doesn't. So there was a series of steps that you thought creating the RFP and then moving on. I think that those steps should be where we say suggested key actions, they should be, um, uh, put in that box and enumerated and articulated because it was really it was really spot on. So I, do, I forget what you said, you had about four points that should be added to one. Right, I mean, Chris and I have had a lot of con um, conversations about this. I, I, I mean, the first step here is, and this we need to do internally, and I think you either have to charge Chris and I with it, or, and we need to talk to Nina, is, is there are two water task force committees and they're competing against each other. And there's a lot of um, grenade throwing. And so what we really need to do is come together as one committee. And for me, what I really need to understand is what exactly is the role of the Board of Health when it comes to water? Because I believe they are only responsible for the quality of water, which certainly ties into everything else we're doing. And that's why we can't have these separate silos. So we're not gonna get anywhere with all this grenade throwing until we have you know, one cohesive group um, where everybody's working together in the sandbox. And, you know, it's not just going to be the Board of Selectmen 
and when I use the term the board of selectmen, I mean, you know, our staff and consultants, but it's also, you know, we have to figure out what the board of health's role is and we have to figure out how to work with them. Yeah, yeah Robin, I, again, I agree with all this. and We've talked about this a fair amount in the past year. And so what I'm saying is, if you're going to have a plan, those steps should be enumerated so we can measure progress and understand where we're going. Right. And there's no way to do all that in one year. It's a huge look. So we have to figure out what's, you know, we have to, you know, I think for this year, we have to put together an RFP, right? Mm -hmm. We have to go out to bid. Uh, we have to figure out the roles and responsibilities of the Water Resource Committee. Yeah, we too. have to, right, prioritize conservation. And I think the first baby steps we can do with conservation is just, and that started already. Right, um, that's, that's listed as two here. So Right, right. So you have that. You, I mean, you have a lot of the stuff. The things that's right. listing is the RFP and straightening out the org chart seems right. to be two biggies. Right. Right. Can I just add one thing to that um, with regards to the request for proposal or, or having half the people that are on the drought management task force meeting that we zoom into, half of those people are consultants to the various towns, the various bodies, the various cities. A lot of these are, are cities and towns and, and many of them are a, 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 a region. So for example, what I would like to investigate is, is, is there a regional resource that we can, like the Charles River watershed, for example, or an area that encompasses Dover, Millis, Medfield, whatever, where the water from that flows into Elm Bank actually comes from. So one of the things that's missing on this is a second source of water supply, right, Aaron? And it's part, of, it's part of one, John, where it says regionalization, additional water sources, Elm Bank, MWRA, neighboring communities. Yeah, that, that's what I was alluding to, Bob, with regards to that. And, and number one, have we identified what, have we identified a a person or a group that's already associated with this that we can one tap into number two can we we need to as part of what robin was saying earlier develop a strategic plan that identifies these are the second and third sources as we meet with neighboring communities the state to better understand the availability for for b so a identify those those sources and B identify where we've already enumerated A and B. Uh, B identify can we Elm Bank, the town of Natick, um, the town of Needham utilizing the MWRA, what are those legal um, roadblocks or legal opportunities that we have for that? Chris, we, does that make sense and 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 do you follow what I'm trying to do is to, to make sure we highlight first, let's, let's identify the channel, the, the, if that's the right word, no pun intended, the, um, the right way to get to these, these organizations. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. If I, um, that makes sense, uh, as does, uh, you know, Robin and Bob's comments as well. Um, maybe just a couple of points uh, of clarification or maybe more of an update actually for the board, which might help with the conversation. Um, so all these additional sources um, and what potentially we can do, you know, that is all what is being built into uh, a draft scope of services essentially that we would issue um, as an RFP. I have, um, I have asked the, the staff water group to start to shape out a draft of what that scope of work can look like so that I can then share it with other entities in town, whether it be the Board of the Health, the existing Water Resources Committee and the Board of Selectmen, so that we can all coalesce around one document, finalize that document before we, before we go out and then go through interviews to pick who the best consultant is for us. 
one of the things that I have been doing that I recently just started um, is to, to get a better sense of my own about what the possibilities are so that we can make sure that the RFP and the scope of work that we put together is reflective of reality. So for instance, I had a conversation with Dedham and Westwood Water District uh, last week uh, and they are provided or supplied not only but partially by the MWRA. So they buy water from the MWRA uh, at high points throughout their season when the demand requires it. Um, and, you know, I asked, well, is there water available for the town of Dover if we had periods where we needed some additional water, just as a conceptual, as a theoretical, hypothetical type of situation. You know, and they said, well, that's, you know, really a question for the MWRA, right, on whether or not they'd be able to, uh, you know, allow that. So I understand that consultants will have this experience, but I wanted them just be able to have these original conversations so that I could share this back with the board as we shape out the scope of work uh, for the engagement uh, so that we could have these conversations uh, again as we as the board finalizes the, the scope of work. Um, so I hope these are helpful. Uh, I'm happy to be joined by anyone if, if you'd like. Um, they've been kind of more just informal as I've been having conversations with folks. Hey, you know, um, you know, what, how's your water set up, right? And is there a way for, for Dover to potentially be able to, to partner with you? Again, nothing set in stone, but just to understand what the landscape is out there. So, so that's basic research, Chris, that's good. Yep. Great, and, and Chris, the one person we can tap who is happy to help us with this is Ron Myrick. So he said as soon as we were ready to go, he would be happy to help us. You know, being in the field, I think his expertise is really helpful. Perfect. And so I hope to have this document, at least in very draft form for the board's review and others review, you know, in the next month or so. Got it. Robin, one of the things that you mentioned that, that I just want to be sure we highlight that is really add is drought enforcement bylaws and, and restriction management. You know, that item number three so, so important um, that we have a restriction management. Well, we need, right, we need to understand what our options are and we need to look at what other towns are doing. And then we need, you know, town meetings gonna have to sign off on this. So we have to, you know, we have to present data and let the citizens of, of data let the citizens um, of Dover vote on it. Yeah. You know, the, the conservation arm of the meeting of the, um, of the Water Resource Task Force has done a lot of information, has done a lot of research and they have a lot of data. So, you know, one of the things we could do is just have a meeting with them. And I think Carol's in charge, so it's very organized and we can just figure out what they have. Yeah. Amy Moot has got a lot of that as well with open space and, and, and there's lots of resources at open space. So we've, we've got to get those two groups together because they're, they're there's Well, I think, I think John, you know, again, I think we need to figure out the roles and responsibilities of this water task force and let this water task force take the lead and certainly we'll get input from those other organizations because there's no reason to recreate the wheel but i think you know really our first step is gathering information and i don't want what we're collecting to be tarnished by the perception that you know some of these committees have ulterior motives so I think I think I think all we're doing here is just gathering data, and and I think what we have to emphasize is just because we're gathering data, doesn't mean that there are going to be restrictions put in place. Ultimately, the citizens of Dover decide, but all we can do is present facts to people, and 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 have a plan. I think nobody can um, can say that. The weather patterns aren't changing and that, you know, we do have to understand what a drought management plan would look like. 
And if all the communities around us have signs up, ordering every other day, it's, you know, my opinion is that we should be doing the same thing because we're basically all sharing, you know, there are gates between Needham and Medfield and Wellesley, right? Right. And Dover's water supply. So. Agreed. So I still, my, still my takeaway is I agree. There's an RFP, a scope of work that requires. Right. And, and, and I think it's all, I think the only thing here that isn't explicitly stated is the RFP. Right. And no, and then we need to have the organizational issues resolved. Right. And I mean, I think Chris, Chris has done, you know, there, there is a working group within the town staff that represents all of the various committees, right, right, Chris? And I think this is a this is a really good way, as a matter of fact, in my opinion, it's the only way to move this forward because committee members change, people move, and we need continuity. You know, it needs to be owned by the staff, the professionals in the town. Yeah, we agree. I, again, this is a planning exercise, and so right. the planning should identify the key steps, and I'm just trying to identify the key steps, and the ones that I think are key, from what you guys have said, are the scope of work, RFP issues, and the organizational issues, and then three, four, two, three, four, and, five, and two, three, and four all cover the various and sundry points that uh, John has raised, and, and Chris has talked about, and certainly you and I have talked about. So it's just right. a matter of, so that we don't, it's on the you know, it's something, it's a to-do, it's there. I don't have to rely on my memory, which is failing, to, to go back and look at this stuff and say, have we done one, two, three, four, and five? Right. I thought, I thought Chris did a really good job, and I completely agree. This is, this is the number one priority. Great. Can we move to number two? I got a, I got a question on, on, on one. So, I mean, when we talk about, when we talk about, this is a sustainability issue, water as a sustainability issue. I, I um, when I saw that, I had a question about energy. Uh, what, if anything, we're doing about energy and should energy be, um, if not a priority, should at least be listed as something that we should look at? And I, and I come at it from a couple of different perspectives. One perspective is the initiatives to, you know, use solar to offset some of our energy needs. But I was also thinking about energy as, now, does the planning board have, um, does, does the planning board reach into like building code? Is that part of their responsibility? And if it is, should we be working on changing our building codes to reflect sustainable building and energy use? And come we, down from the state. <clears throat> oh, sorry, Bob, I thought you had paused with a question. That, well, the you, didn't, you didn't give me an answer, right? The building code set by the state. By the state. So we have no way of influencing what gets done in town um, in terms of, of moving away from fossil fuel heating systems, et cetera, et cetera. That's all at the state level. Uh, and the only, the only way we impact that, Bob, is through permits, through, through zoning permits, special use permit, that type of thing. If, if, uh, if, somebody, if somebody applies for a, a permit if somebody applies for a change based upon as chris said the the existing structure i mean is it something you could draw bone with the local builders is it something we should consider well as most basically? communities if they most communities who are in the business of doing this undertake essentially a, a lobbying effort um, where they will share information about solarized programs where homeowners can go and you know put solar plant panels on their homes or exchange out uh you know oil burners for natural gas or heat pumps or things like that it's communities act more as uh as the middleman so to speak to connect their resident with a you know a third party provider for those energy type of projects the other thing that communities will do that <clears throat> i know the board has talked about um, in the past is, uh, you know, they will encourage from a, a municipal and community standpoint, um, these type of energy initiatives by installing uh, electronic charging stations on municipal property so that individuals who might have a vehicle like that could charge up at the townhouse, for instance, or another public building. Um, those 
are the main areas that I've seen communities engage in other than directly themselves for their own town yeah, yeah, yeah. doing this. Yeah. So then the last question on, on sort of this issue of sustainability for me is the municipal vulnerability program. I mean, when I was talking with, with uh, a couple of, of uh, people in the past, uh, let's say 12 months, um, um, people were talking about the impact of climate change and the impact of things like heavy downpours on the highways and the roadways. Um, and I was, and, and um, you know, we all suffer power outages because we have wires running electricity rather than having the, the wires buried in the ground where they wouldn't be affected by electricity. And so there's a host of things that, that I think tie together sort of under the municipal vulnerability program to sort of ensure that the town doesn't suffer these kinds of things going forward as climate changes and weather becomes more severe. And I'm not suggesting that that become a priority. I'm suggesting that it may be something we want to think about and should be on the list as something to think about. So energy and MVP and how do we sort of protect the town from the, the, uh, the unintended consequences of severe weather, whether it be water runoff, damaging the roads, electricity outages, all that kind of stuff, which I think can be addressed. Anyway, again, I was just a thought since it's a planning exercise. I, from a planning standpoint, Bob, I think it's a, a, a very good idea, and I would I would put it under a number four, the government structure project management, and because it, it incorporates a lot of those things and it incorporates sort of a town-wide project theme that would be under more of modernization and, and, and the structure of what we're doing, um, maybe not necessarily land use and open space. So yeah, that's fine, John. Just again, I just I, I was into the planning mode. So you know, a couple of beers, two martinis, and this is what's come out. Understood. Um, are, are we good for number one? Can we go to number two? Yep. So number two, with regards to number two, the interim finance director and consultants to implement best practices. Um, Chris, as an overview, um, do you have any specific comments on this? Because there, there are, you know, it's a pretty wide topic. And I know that we've had uh, a very good utilizing, as Bob alluded to earlier, a consultant structure in, in our particular case, the Collins Center. Um, is there anything that you would like to sort of highlight here, Chris? Um, I put together a detailed list. Um, within the document that lists out the actual steps. <clears throat> um, and I can just quickly run on it through this if um, if the board would like. Um, so a couple of things that you'll hear, I, I don't think any of these things are new. Um, you've heard them in years past, they've been addressed in management letters of the past, but um, you know, that we could do a better job around the reconciliation of cash, the reconciliation of, receivable, of receivables, um, as well as changing some of our internal practices about uh, how we're moving paper. Um, or who's responsible for these, all to really just be able to get our day-to-day -day and do our day-to-day -day in the finance team uh, more quickly, more rapidly, um, so that we're able to um, better report on and better understand the town's financial uh, standing uh, at any point in time throughout the year. Um, so as I've mentioned, I've explicitly listed out all the goals here for the team. These are actually embedded within their performance evaluations for this year. Um, so these are the treasurer collectors. And then we've got the same, or not the same, but uh, similar goals, so to speak, for the, for the town accountant. Um, so these, um, I have worked with... Uh, I've worked with our interim finance director, Carl Valente, on putting them together in coordination uh, with our finance team. Um, they're taken heavily from um, both management letters and town audits uh, from the past, as well as the state's uh, financial management review. 
And the goals here <clears throat> will primarily, I'd say, do two things. One, again, make sure that we're doing our day-to-day -day processes on time on a regular basis um, so that it makes all of our other work that is dependent on ensuring that we're doing this day-to-day more easily to do, and then also uh, allow us to start to move forward on some of the more proactive things that we wanna do. Um, we've talked about electronic time and attendance for a long time. We've talked about departments entering uh, their accounts payable directly into the application rather than passing paper. So it's kind of bolster up our day-to-day -to, -day to make sure it's where we're at and then start to move forward on more forward-facing, forward-looking type of projects. Um, and I do have uh, Carl and the finance team scheduled to review both this past year, but also uh, a detailed summary of each of these goals um, at your next meeting. We had originally planned this for July 15th, um, but given the, um, our auditor's vacation schedule, they're not going to have the uh, the management letter done in time. And I thought it was important to have both documents together. So that'll likely be your meeting um, in August, unless we have a, an earlier one, but we won't miss, we won't meet the July 15th meeting. Is there, is it worthwhile um, maybe move, moving the July meeting by a week or does it not really matter? It's fine to deal with it in August. It's okay. I, so I think it's okay to deal with it um, in August. Um, we're still, as I mentioned, we're moving forward on all of these particular goals with the finance team. Um, it's really just, I wanted an opportunity for the board to hear you not only from the auditors, um, but also from the finance team on, on what their plan is moving forward. Okay. Cause I mean, none of these are a surprise. I, I mean, a lot of them have been on there for, years that, that's an indictment i know i i mean i i i think all the efforts that we've undertaken the last couple of years are finally addressing things that needed to be addressed but i think there were other things that were a priority that you had to take care of before we could address some of these you know i, I will be really interested to see um how the lockbox processing helps with the tax receipts that are due August 1st, because I think that's gonna help a lot. So I got a couple of comments. Go ahead, Bob. As I always do. So to me, Chris, this is one of the things that I had on, on, uh, uh, on my to-do list. Um, uh, under finance, I had modern practices and, and finishing the DOR recommended can, review. So I can you repeat the first thing you said, Bob? I didn't quite get it. Oh, on, on my list, I had a list of goals for 2022. And, uh, <clears throat> and it was um, under finance, I had sort of modern practices. And um, so this piece that you've been talking about strikes me, if I put my fidelity cap on, this is Kaizen. The uh, continuous improvement, moving you know, moving the organization forward, taking a deep dive, and making sure that we're doing what we should be doing, using the tools and practices that are uh, acceptable and current. So that's great. I mean, I think we should just call this this, this is a, as a set of activities is process improvement um, with a big P and a big I, and it is basically. And I've also I've also been thinking about sort of where we've been for almost the past three years is sort of phase one. And that you could talk about it as repair or renovation or catch up. And I think, and I don't think we're gonna be able to get to it today, but I think I would also like to go and say, let's start phase two, which is how do we advance the organization? And, I, and the example, Robin, is, um, yeah, so phase one repair, we move from hand processing checks in the treasurer's office to using a lockbox system. And I've said this in the past, lockbox, when I joined the financial world, was on its way out in 1960, in the 60s. And so to, to move from um, <laughs> hand processing checks in the treasurer's office to lockbox is certainly an improvement <laughs> and, and something that probably should have been done 50 years ago. 
Um, right. And just, I mean, I'm in business today and lockboxes, but lockboxes are still very prevalent. You know, certainly some customers use ACHs, yeah. but some still use lockbox. So yeah, no, it's, but it's not still, dead. The, the bank that I worked for back in the 60s was getting rid of check, was looking for ways to get rid of check processing and lockbox. It was, it wasn't, it's not only profitable for local banks, I guess. But we should. Well, be, yeah, I mean, the on. problem is, you know, everybody's trying to get rid of it, but there are a lot of companies don't want to go that route. So. Yeah, I understand. We had the same problem when we when we dematerialized securities, um, <clears throat> but we should be thinking about e-payments, right? We shouldn't be thinking about lockbox. So, but we do we do have e-payments for taxes. You can pay online. Well, what is it? You what's the what's the application? UniPay. UniPay. Yeah, we did a big promotional event uh, this year, as you recall, where we built out a dedicated online payment web page and heavily promoted online payment uh, via news alert, social media, as well as the insert in tax bills. What was the impact? Uh, the impact actually was, was positive. Uh, I don't, so it was, I don't have an exact number, but what was communicated to me was that there, they saw a push and a movement toward more people using the online payment. Um, I don't have the exact breakdown on me, um, but they did see more, more people shift toward online payment. So what we did was we asked the treasurer collector to continue in all of the tax bills moving forward to continue to put that insert in the bill that says, hey, we've got an online payment uh, application available to you um, for your convenience if you'd like to pay your, your bills online. So we hope to continue to just promote that as we move forward. Okay, but I would really like quantitative data. Sure. I mean, one of the things that's been missing, in, in, and, and again, this is, this is looking forward, not looking backward, is when we do something like this, I'd like to understand what the adoption rate is so that we can <clears throat> actually know how we're doing. Um, and I don't know that, you know, I, I, what I did was I happened to look at a, uh, a piece of work done by the tab back in, I think, either September of, of 20 or in that time frame that listed all the applications and it's the current status and, um, you know, what was, on, what was going on or not going on, what was a high or low priority, et cetera, et cetera. And I was, it was really refreshing to go back and look at that and understand the amount of work um, that's sort of in play. And that's where, I, that's where I rediscovered Unipay. And I don't know a thing about it or how it works. You know, I mean, normally what I do with my bills is I, they're all online, right? I, everything's online. Everything goes through either my bank or Fidelity. So, so it's like, I don't write checks. Like the only check I write is really to the town. So, so when you talk about, when you talk about publicizing and all this, you know, and making people aware, I did not know the only way I knew, remembered about it was by looking at a tab, almost a year old check sheet. I don't know, John, did you know about it? Got to spend more time on the website, Bob. Yeah. Right. Now, you don't want me to spend more time on the website. <laughs> so there's, there's a couple of things that I, was, that, I, that I had in my notes with regards to this, Bob, that are, that are a bit down the line in terms of what you're saying, but they're all related. And I'll give you one example. When a person, Bob, you and I talked about this the other day, when a person goes to sell their house, they need a fire, inspe a fire alarm inspection. The fire alarm inspection has to be done by so the homeowner going to the treasurer collector's office, getting a permit, paying $40 to get the permit, and then it somehow <laughs> mysteriously, maybe through vacuum tubes, goes over to David Tiberi and um, in his office, and and then Dave has to figure out, okay, are they on the list, and are they where, when do I put them on on his list to go do the inspection? That's crazy. That is just absolutely crazy. So you've got two offices, check writing, bill paying, all that. So that's just one example of we got a long way to go to get that to where 
you literally pay it on your phone and it shows up on Dave's phone and Dave says, I got to go to Bob Springett's house to do a smoke detector test, you know, tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Yeah, that opens up a whole different set of issues, John. Yeah, but it, it is, <clears throat> it does, but it's along the same lines of how do you pay for a bill that you have to pay and how do we, uh, how do we eliminate five people touching that same piece of paper in this particular case, as Robin alluded to, it, in most cases, it's still a check, right? A right, but you also have, like John, my parents don't like to use oh, online banking. And oh, there's a lot of people like that in town. I, Robin, half my clients. Right. Half, half of the people who have, you know, tens of, of millions of dollars they still want to physically write a check for every. Well, that is the dematerialization story. There was a long tail to get rid of physical securities, but it happened. But it has a start, right? If you can eliminate half, I mean, just look at the demographic change in town in the last 10 years. You know, I mean, we have the, we have the resources available for those individuals who want to pay that way to be right. able to. Right. I think that's the key, Chris, and that's what Bob's saying, is we do have it in place. The utilization is going to be slow, and we just have that. That's how we, we, can think, we, can, we can think about ways to push that along. Um, as you all have said, and I can witness the same thing, in our, in our financial world, people push back instantly when you talk about electronic movement of money. It is something, there is a generation or two that are just not um, willing to do it, so. So the other thing I have on finance or, or is we need to really nail free cash. A, a really good detailed understanding of free cash so we, there are no surprises. And, um, and the generally reporting and, um, you know, at the school committee level, we had monthly reports on the status of the financial, uh, the status of the budget. I don't know what kind of financial information the board might want, but reporting uh, financial information back to the board uh, on whether it's a monthly or quarterly basis, that really needs to become part of the uh, <coughs> our. That, that segue um, down into number five, the financial reserve policies and long-term financial planning. So that that's probably, that's probably more closely a subtopic of number five than, than it would be for it. I know they, they work together because you've got to have tax collecting, you've got to have the town accountant, and you've got to have our, our board of selectmen ability to integrate those, those things. And, yeah. and as we've talked about very, we've talked about more and more these past three or four years, how we are articulating the our estimates and our projections to the uh, to our citizens. So that that probably should go as item item two B under long term financial planning and financial reserve policies. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. My my list doesn't co necessarily correlate to Chris's list in terms of which numbers are where. It's just sort of like I said, two beers and a martini. It's more random. As <clears throat> long as it's on there. Got it. Right? We, it needs to get nailed because it's been a continuing source of irritation to any number of people. And Chris, I, uh, thank you for pulling that up. And, and I, I do agree with, with Robin and Bob. I, I view this as this is our work in progress document. And these things, you know, as Bob said, it's an indictment of, of, of slow. As Robin said, it's, a, it's, you know, things that we've been dealing with, we have put in place, the three of us, for a long time. I don't expect them to happen overnight, but it is very good to have these and to be able to point to to say, we are making changes and we do recognize these things must be done. Right, and there are times where you have to pivot to something else. Agreed. <clears throat> Right? They should be done this decade. <laughs> they should be done this year. They should be done this week. Not that they should just be done. Yes. Yes. We are, I believe, 
all in agreement <laughs> that uh, unfortunately, as my kids tell me, life gets in the way. So, so, can we so that up? was my, that was the last of that was my my notes on uh, the financial area. Can we go to number three? Sure. Volunteers handbook. That's a carryover, right? That's a carryover from a, a year or two ago. Yep. Carry over from um, from last. last year. Chris, I found my physical handbook from when I was a member of the Finance and Budget Committee in the town of Wellesley. First thing that we got was literally this, the handbook, and I have it. You have that in electronic copy? No. <laughs> No. So, so I, got a, I got a question about that. So when it comes to government structure, um, we talked about actually changing government structure from the model that we're using today to a, to a charter to a change. Is that's not on here? Should that be on here? So I didn't include that in my initial list of, um, of items, but these are the, the board's goals at, at the end of the day. So that's a, a question for the board. But this on the handbook is more about not necessarily the roles and responsibilities of each committee, but more of here are the roles and responsibilities of the members within a committee, right? How the chairman serves a committee, right? And a best practice to rotate the chairman and just general resource information for committees, whether you have them or I guess whether you don't, um, but it's I view those as two different things. One, we wanted to make sure that we get a resource document for volunteers, regardless of how they volunteer for the community. That's what this item is here. Okay. <clears throat> um, so you covered it. I mean, in, in your little, in your brief, you've covered a fair amount of territory, right? So we have uh, 105,000 boards and committees, yep. and we have 300,000 members of these boards and committees. And we're assuming that people know what they're doing and the assumption is probably wrong, right? So when I think about boards and committees and I think about government structure, I think about whether or not we should be having 503,000 boards and committees and what value do they add? And so from a, from a board of selectmen, me as a member of the board of selectmen, from a planning perspective, I'm way more interested in is our government structure, the way that we do things, is it efficient and is it effective? Um, and I think that should be a priority, um, as well as the overall structure that we use to, to govern the town. You know, sort of a handbook for committee members is, is, is better than a nice to have. Um, but um, I wouldn't see it as a, it's sort of something that should get done. Um, whether or not it should be articulated here is a different question and what the priority should be. Um, and then you get to um, the question for me on boards and committees is, What's the role of the chair? And part of the role of the chair is to do is to run the meetings. It's to inform and train the members of the committee. And it's to keep this gosh darn uh, web page up to date current with, with, with content. Um, and and we've, been, we've been, you know, this has sort of been going on for a very long time. We have a, you know, long-term planning committee, you know, Warren committees, the Warren committee. How does the Warren committee add value in the 20, in the, the first quarter of the 21st century. I mean, these things are old and people have been doing the same thing for a long time. And I really think it's time to step back and reassess how the people that we're using and the time that they're devoted uh, to the town actually adds value. That should be, to me, that's a high priority goal. Sorry about that. Does the, does the board feel the same way? Um, because if, if so, uh, this would be a, uh, this would be a similar to water, I think, uh, a consultant engagement where someone would come in because it's, you know, then you start to get into structurally changing Dover's form of government, which touches everything. And it's a, it's a large lift. Um, and it's a multi-year lift. Um, and so just let me know. And, uh, and we'll do it. I'll make sure it's on here. Um, but it's, again, you know, the Warren Committee is 
statutorily required, right, through the state, right? Yeah. So if we were to shift away, you could go to a town council form of government, so to speak. But again, these are very complex, large, really changing how Dover looks governmentally night and day. Um, so uh, I, I would suggest to the board that you'd want to bring somebody in very much like the water about here's how you're structured, here's how you could change things, and here would be what the, the pros and cons and the pluses and minuses would be. So I just want to add, so when I, the things that I've generally talked about, this, some of it is the phase one repair sort of things that we need to continue to do to make up for, for the, uh, what's happened in the past. And what I'm talking about now is how do we advance? And so um, phase two, advancing the town. So part of it is, is um, the overall government structure. Uh, that's for sure. The roles of boards and committees, do they add value? I think those two things could be separated. And then the third piece of it is um, how do we use our technology to um, help boards and committees like the Warren Committee or the Capital Budget Committee use the remote participation Zoom site things to really reach out to citizens more regularly and more often for, you know, to inform and engage. Um, you know, the idea of having an open hearing where people tromp into, you know, 25 people, most of whom are townies, move tromp into the town hall to listen to the open hearing, it, it, that's dated. You know, um, you, you know, you got to follow something like Ford did with Carol, where he's out there, he was out there with his team, you know, multiple, multiple times along the way, informing people what's going on. And so we need to modernize you know, as well as think about value added, they need to, to find better ways of reaching the public. So those are my- Bob, Bob, you do understand we have one hand tied behind our back with this because we are governed by the Commonwealth. And, you know, I believe unless Baker changes um, the rules, remote participation in the fall is going away and a majority of the members have to be in a physical meeting. Yeah, <clears throat> Robin, that was that was widely reported yesterday, um, it, if on Bloomberg and a bunch of the, the local networks, how the 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 legislature is split right now on remote participation. Right. Because you know, I you completely know. agree with Bob. It worked under COVID. You know, it worked, but we need help from the legislator. You know, there's just so much we can do. For me, as a member working full time, being able to participate via Zoom has made my life a lot easier because I can be anywhere. Absolutely. And I think we've proven to be really effective. The, the most impressive, Robin, Terry Soboleski, who was on the Carroll Committee, literally attended meetings from his sailboat in South Carolina <laughs> when he took a sabbatical. That was unbelievable. But, but we needed to, Chris is working on a hybrid system where the meeting takes place, but you're using Zoom for, for outside participation. Is that, so I'm unaware of this change. I thought we were good for a year on remote participation. That's changed? We're good for a, it, we're good for a year. They extended, there were a couple of dates being thrown around. At first it was the end of the summer, then it was December, then it was April. We're good for about a year. As John mentioned, it's still being debated by the powers to be up on Beacon Hill about the long-term um, solution. I would be shocked if at the end of next year, towns aren't able to engage in a hybrid model where they can do remote slash in-person. I hope you're right. Me too. And we will continue to lobby our legislative delegation. Yeah. To make She's that a believer. Wait a minute. We, uh, Denise is definitely a believer. Well, nobody can say it didn't work. I mean, it worked. It worked. Right. So listen, uh, I have a hard stop at 930. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's just agree upon that these items we will continue. Uh, the host a volunteer appreciation event. I, I think that's critical. I, I really do want to do that. Um, we, so can we just... Can we just go back to government structure? Because I don't necessarily 
agree with Bob. And I don't think, I don't think we made a decision that this was a priority. I agree with Chris, this is a really heavy lift. And I think what might be very useful before you start making significant changes is to understand within our current structure what roles and responsibilities are. Like for instance, with water resource, you know, we need to understand what's, I don't want to step on people's toes, you know, what's board of health, what's board of selectmen. And I think we've proven with COVID, we can work together and be really successful. So we need to understand within our current structure, you know, what are the roles and responsibilities and we need members of those committees to understand what their roles and responsibilities are. Yeah, I agree with that, Robin. I think that that, that, and so thinking along the lines of how you guys have thought about the water resources issue, it is a long-term issue and it does start with research and understanding, but I just think it needs to sort of be, if it's something that we agree ought to be thought about, not necessarily, you know, and laid out, we could, we could, we could begin to do that kind of work. Right, and I think everything under everything starts with as much as nobody wants to do this is understanding what you have. Yep. So just to this point, just so I'm clear, so if I could put it in here, you know, the roles and responsibilities we can only do that for board of selectmen empowered or board right. of selectmen committees. All the other independents, planning board, board of health, all those other entities, you know, you've got no sway unless you town meetings structurally change is. We ask them to do a review, though, Chris. You can. We could do that right now. We, we could do that right now. Right. right, and that's what I would do is just say, you know, we're undertaking a major project. Um, we ask that that you that you help us as a town, you know, right. so that we all under because it would be kind of good on everybody's website. Like when you go to planning board, it says. Although I think it might say it, but I can't remember. So it's something, it's a, it's a, right now I would put it as a thought project. How, you know, we'd like to, under, to, to do this kind of thing and then we can flush it out as we move forward. And follow the model that, we, that you put together for the, uh, the water resource uh, work. And, and I think that's just, borrowing from the successful model for the COVID task force. Yes, yes. Is that enough, Chris? Uh, yes. Are you there? I don't yeah. hear anybody. No, we okay, I got you, John, okay. So we're going to move to number four. And the IT coordinator position into a project manager. Chris, would you like to comment on that? Just sure. in terms yeah. of, of the reporting aspect of this and, and as Bob talked about earlier, the effect of this? Yep. Yep. So the town, bef the, the town historically has had one kind of hybrid, all encompassing IT related position responsible for, I guess, coordinating the web, but also doing all things IT, uh, which I think is a, which is and was an antiquated model. Um, so the town um, had sought funding for a municipal project manager, uh, which we have now hired for that individual oversees what I'd characterize as the, the modernization efforts of the town's operations and how we incorporate technology into these operations. Um, and a lot of the more IT network, software, infrastructure uh, work um, is really just all contracted out. This is who we use retrofit for um, to do all that work and it works pretty well, which it allows uh, our team to be able to focus on, again, those forward thinking projects rather than just serving as a 
kind of a help desk troubleshooting entity. Um, we also have built out the web team um, with, uh, with three positions overseeing kind of the admin of the website, um, but also pushing that down into departments. So then that begs the question, well, what do we do with this existing kind of web coordinator IT role, given that both the web and the IT coordination is now owned by other entities? Um, and the thought is that given where we want to head and where we want to, I think, remain in terms of constant process improvement, a general project manager, uh, similar to the role that Dave sits in, but as a more junior level, um, would make a lot of sense where they can be an impact player and be, um, be allocated to certain projects, whether they're high visibility, high profile that come up, or whether they're planned and, uh, and, and, um, and as part of a, a broader multi-year strategy. So my thought is to have this individual be the same pay and grade. It's just a repurpose of the position, again, to focus on more project management rather than web and IT coordination. And they would report to the town's municipal project manager, um, which we currently have as a high level leadership department, department head role in town. Robin, what do you think about that? I, I was talking, but I was on mute. Uh, just for, which some people prefer, uh, just for clarification here, um, <laughs> would the role of this person be to help keep the website current? Because I know there's certain committees who have a hard time making sure that their pages are current. They seem to not be able to update them themselves. So do you envision this being the role? I know some of it's training. I, I, I know there are a lot of different factors, but. I, I don't, I don't. We've got a dedicated web team put together for the website. Okay. And as long as, right. as long as that team is successful, we, we will not need any other dedicated staff focused on making website updates. Okay, so then then I, what, what do we envision this person, the role of this person being more to do what retrofit is doing now? No, more, more leading, more leading project implementation. Um, so, okay. you know, right. at using, using this year's goals, for instance, um, you know, this individual could help um, slide in and help the implementation uh, of the electronic time and attendance and the electronic okay. and then I could shift Dave to focus on taking more of a leadership role so to speak on overseeing all the pieces of the water effort for instance or have Dave take on new projects um, that are kind of queued up because of of lack of resources okay all right that makes sense that's how okay. I view this, this position okay yeah. and then you, you know, the role of selectmen, a lot of time, all you, you only hear from people when things aren't going the way they want them to go. So I, I always feel like I'm Debbie Downer here because nobody ever calls me up to say, love the new process. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Um, so, you know, have we reached out to some of the more heavily driven um, volunteer committees to make sure that their updates to the website, they have the support that they need? I'll have Kate take that one. Okay. And, 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 you know, maybe it's just a reminder if there are issues, maybe, maybe, maybe Kate can be the, I don't know who the point person is so that I can send them there. She is the point person. Okay. So no, that's that's a good question. Um, so uh, right now we're having everyone send uh, any website requests, questions, concerns, uh, and copying me and Felicia. Okay. Um, and from there uh, we'll take care of it. And uh, we actually have we created an email address uh, which will go live next week. Um, so I, I was going to send out 
a memo and an announcement. Um, so it's just a general email address. I'm not sure off the top of my head. It might be website team. Um, and this will be for boards and committees uh, to, to send any uh, updates or questions, concerns, or any, anything like that that they want on their page uh, to. Um, okay. So that, that's in the works. I think that's a great way to ensure that things get addressed because it's going to an email address that you that should only have those requests in it so it doesn't get lost in your general email. So right. right. I just wanted to say that and if anyone has uh, we've been telling people this um, again any updates just send them to me and Felicia and uh, we'll take care of them. But we'll definitely get the word out about the email address. Um, and we're also creating a, a Google form, um, which Dave worked on as far as um, for boards and committees who don't have staff. Right. So the three active ones that I know of are, are Board of Health, the, the um, Carroll Committee and um, Transfer Station, Transfer Station, right? Those are the guys who do a lot of frequent updates. Is that, is that your view too, Kate? Correct. And is anybody else sort of rise to their level or is everybody else sort of a little bit lower intensity? Uh, I would say they're a little bit lower intensity, but uh, some of the other ones like the planning board, you know, they have a staff member. To do things right, like right. Um, so that, that is why I don't see those requests as much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That was very helpful. Thank you both. Very now I know where to direct. So my inquiries. I, I took a lot of notes, but I don't know if there's anything that specifically from those notes gets added to this bullet point. I think the bullet point summarizes everything that we just said. Yeah. And the, the only thing I would do is to, to say, Kate, I'll let, I'll let you add to the bullet point and, and expand upon it as you see fit. How's that? That sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Excellent delegation, John. <laughs> I'm, I've got everything Bob, he does, Robin. I've got Bob's hard stop and I've got, you know, you, you have to be home to walk Rio. So I want to move on to priority number five. Just an FYI, Rio and I have already walked. Five in the morning. <laughs> of course you have. <laughs> why, 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 why? No, there was a very torrential rainstorm at 5 a.m. I had I to wait. Was and four. It, it was still going on at 5. Was it? Yeah. So, it's, by the way, the word torrential is was used twice for the storm that's coming this afternoon and tomorrow. So. Tomorrow, Chris, I hope you're hung you're on the Cape already, because they say there are even many tornado warnings out there. On yeah. Cape? Yeah, it's, the Cape's supposed to get really hit hard. It's a tropical storm on the Cape. Well, let's, let's take the next 15 minutes to get through these so Chris can get back to proper planning. Battening, for battening down the hatches, John. Down the hatches, yeah. Uh, so, with this, so this leads to some of the things that Bob mentioned earlier, some of the, the items that we were talking about, both in, in section one and two, um, specifically the capital reserve fund codifying the town spending policy. And I believe that we're all on the same page with regards to our board of selectmen use of cash, how we prioritize the capital and how we also project where the taxpayer will be. I, I got feedback from town meeting that this past town meeting with the budget process that we presented and with, as it pertains to the Carroll project, the Carroll uh, town meeting, that that was one of the best, most easy to understand presentations that the people that were present had ever seen. So I, we, the Board of Selectmen, got lots of positive feedback for that particular presentation. And I, it I think- It was well-deserved, I'll tell you that. 
A lot of people work. A lot of people work to simplify that and make it understandable. Agreed. So the only thing I'd like to add is that free cash analysis because it's been a thorn in the side for years. That was included in um, in the uh, in the goals in the earlier item. I know that was that was a pretty, it pretty, it was a pretty dense document and can get lost, but noted. Okay. Good. Then I'm good. Robin, anything? I'm good. Okay. So open space initiatives, um, you know, this, I know this is sort of just these past couple of months with regards to Carol and, and all the things that we've had on our plate, the, the hail, the hail open space, the hail process, we, we really have got to get our hands around that and with as it pertains to the whole impact to open space in the town, it, it is monumental. And I also think given where we are and what we've just been through from a budgeting standpoint, a $10 million lift to the town with regards to hail is probably the deal of the century. And to be able to, to take that one entity and be able to put it in a conservation restriction, um, it, it would just, me, it means so much in terms of the, the value of that land to the town. Well, again, John, we have to get the town to vote on that. You know, so our, our goal or our responsibility is to present the facts and the pros and cons and have the town decide. Yep. Bob, anything to add on that? No, I think that's straightforward. We should just move on, John. Okay. Number six, DPW. Chris, where are we with the DPW's, the, uh, the, the, the consultant's report? So I left this for, for this fiscal year, FY22. Uh, we have the report, as you recall, it was presented to the board um, a few months back with their recommendations. Uh, what I need to do now, and it's on me, is to piece out and flesh out that, re that, that report into action items um, that I will represent to the board for your consideration and your approval. And each of those action items will have sub actions that certain people will be, will be responsible for, but it takes their high level recommendation into a more manageable on the ground um, uh, document that can actually be implemented. And I hope to get that to you guys relatively in the, you know, in the next three to four weeks so that we can actually implement a lot of these recommendations if the board approves and agrees this fiscal year. So that'd be like no later than September, right? It'd be no later than September. And you, what you're talking about is staging or phasing? I'm thinking about a phased approach, yep. Three particular phases, yep. Okay. Robin, anything for that? No, it makes perfect sense to me. Okay, thanks, Chris. So number seven, Chris, what I would like to add to this or ask Bob and Robin if they would think about adding to this is as we think about a proposal for a capital budget and a renovation, um, a renovation opportunity, I'd like to think about dovetailing this into what we have to do for Carol. And specifically, I think that we will need space, temporary space for Carol with regards to a storage facility and a staging facility. My word, not probably not the right word. But as we, as I thought about that, I kept going back to the idea of Whiting Road, a staging facility, a temporary facility. What Bobby Tosi is doing up at the town, up at the transfer station. I think Whiting Road is a bad idea for a, for a. Um, a place to use for Carol. And, and, and the reason is, I just go back to, it's the wrong use for that space. That, it's like, what we've done in the past is, 
is we have a very a very clear track record as a town. We use things that we have because they're there. And that's, that is exactly what I don't want to do with regards to Whiting Road. Um, I, I think we should think about it in its entirety, pull the lens back and say, we have things that we don't use in the townhouse. We don't need a, a third floor full of crap. My word, sorry. Um, we, let's just not do it because it's there. Let's do it because it's the right thing to do. So that's my thought. Yeah, John, I, I agree. I mean, Whiting Road came up because of its location. It's close to the proposed new site. And the steps that we're going to take, the only steps that we're going to take that I'm aware of is have John Richardson from, from uh, the, the architect take a look at what it might cost to, to uh, do work there. Um, whether you need a thousand or two thousand square feet, we're going to, Chris and I with Ford and his team, we're going to look at to make sure that that makes sense. And then we should look at options. I mean, it's the same old thing. You know, whiting is an option. Chris mentioned the highway department is an option. Um, we're going to use the townhouse to temporarily um, house the park and recreation and the COA as we go through construction. So this is a work in progress, but I think we should have, we should explore the different options. And, um, you know, I think that's what, what's happening to a certain extent. And then we, the board, you know, should be incentive with options and make a decision. Robin, what do you think? Right, I, I, I agree with Bob. I think we need to, you know, look at the various options. And, and I thought that was something we were already doing. Yeah, I think I it think hasn't started, Robin, but I think right. that's what's in play. Right. Chris, anything to add? Uh, nope. I, I, got, I got five minutes and one thing I'd like you to add. Go. Okay, so there's, I have on my, I, st I created a, a, a document and I sent it to Chris. And the only other thing that, that I think I would like the board to consider, and we can't do it today, at least I can't do it today, is I had a, uh, a category called technology. And under technology, I had two major, I had, one, two, three, four. I had I had about four or five topics. Um, the, one of the major topics was website. I think we need a design review on the tech, on the website to cover content, navigation, and have and, and create better quote use aids for people who are trying to work through the website. And I do think we need to continue to work on improving the speed and ease of updating content. And finally, we need metrics. How will we do it with the website? Um, navigation, I mean, I've run several tests and you can get the different pieces in the website, to, sometimes through one click, sometimes through two clicks, sometimes it takes five clicks. That needs to be looked at. And then, and then, and then the sec, the, this, again, this is under sort of the phase two advance. We need to think about document management. I mean, you cannot do the things that John talked about earlier on, rely, relying to the, to the question about um, smoke alarm processing by having all our documents in paper form. The only way you can move to an advanced uh, information management, accessible, searchable, is if that information is digitized. And the only way to do that that I know of right now is document through, a, through document management systems, but I don't know enough about document management systems to understand the value added. And Chris and I have talked about um, having maybe taking a look at something like this, and it covers things like workflow, storage, you know, information needs accessible, all that kind of stuff that we should we should consider and talk about. Yeah. Um, I got, I've just been reminded, so I have like two minutes. Um, <clears throat> and then the other thing I would like the board to consider is the status of tab. Um, it's not clear to me. I mean, it's very clear to me that TAB has helped move from a very, very, very poor technology uh, uh, structure to a much improved technology structure. Uh, but essentially, we, again, we're in this repair phase where we have fixed things that should have been fixed or never should be broken. We've replaced 
um, uh, basically the website, which was falling over with a new platform. We replaced the cemetery system which is no longer supported by the vendor with a new cemetery system. We've made advances with time and attendance, which would be a new application. Um, and um, we really need for TAB, I think the best role for TAB is to be that beacon with a shining a light on the future. Um, and in order to do that, one of the one of the requirements would be to be in order to do that well, you need to have knowledgeable technology oriented people, but you need knowledgeable users to help to form a team to be able to understand how the town's doing things now and to understand what technology would facilitate and to think about what technology will facilitate as you go through time. And that would mean sort of a reboot of the TAB. And um, so just that's the outline. And I would, I would suggest that we have another meeting so we can finish off this sort of planning session. I really got to go. So if, can I take, I'll take a question or if there is any. So I'd like, I'd like to have the website, document management systems and TAB status on, under, under technology is like an item eight. Is that okay? Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna bow out if that's okay. Yeah, so my only comment here, Bob, is why don't we see and work with Chris or, or Dave because this is probably going to dovetail somewhat with the new program manager as well. Yeah, Chris. So we should just make sure that all these, you know, again, don't create extra steps if you don't have to. Yep. Okay. So if you guys set up a date, that, that'd be great. Um, and I'm out. Thank you all very much. Thank you, sir. Batten down the hatches. Tropical storm. Batten down the hatches. You bring in a lot of beer and rum. <laughs> Why so maybe rum? I can get my full house generator hooked up in an hour or two. <laughs> so Robin, is there anything that you would like to add to what Bob just mentioned or are we good with that? I added my comments already. I, you know, I, I think volunteers are great, but volunteers come and go and so if you want things to happen, you need to have um, assign a leadership role in the staff because that's going to give you continuity. It doesn't mean the Board of Selectmen controls it. It just ensures that there's continuity to your project. So I just think as we think about all these things, we should keep that in mind because volunteers really do come and go. And you have some great volunteers with fantastic skill sets for a particular Role and then they move out the town or they change jobs and yeah, it is what it's what Chris alluded to earlier. The the we have to be very careful. The the structure of our town government, the structure of how right. we are established, it calls for very specific mandates, right? That we are required to do. So so uh, we we have to be very mindful of that, that we have to work within the structure, the framework of what we had, unless, of course, we decide we're going to propose changes to this. So, um, all right, well, that, that I, I'm, I'm good with what we've got for the planning and, and budgetary purposes for this portion of the meeting. Um, and we do have the portion of the meeting for our town administrator updates. Chris, anything that you'd like to add? Uh, so I don't have anything else to add, John, on the, on the goals. Um, I will add these thoughts and considerations that were discussed, send them back to the board, and then I think we've got a dedicated time at your meeting next week where we can continue the discussion. So I'll get this out um, to the board as soon as possible. Uh, on the other agenda, um, we do have a, a handful of other items um, uh, on the agenda today. I'm, I'm sorry that we needed to, to add them, but there's a few things, particularly as it relates to the, the building committee 
um, where we need to get some stuff approved um, okay. by the board of selectmen. Um, is that under? Can, we can move to one dot three, which is you, our updates. Is that under? The, I think one dot two would be great, John. Um, which is the contract <laughs> extension for, uh, for the OPM. OPM. Yep. Um, the building committee would like to. Uh, as we talk about continuity, um, we'd like to retain our existing uh, team, both the OPM uh, and our architectural team. Um, this requires a contract extension with both. Um, we're still working out a few small details with the OPM contract extension. Um, but what I wanted to do today was highlight for the board that the building committee um, would like to keep this team. And I would act, like to ask the board today um, to authorize me um, to execute any documents related to the, the extension of, uh, of our OPM contract uh, when we get those materials finalized. Robin, any comments? Um, I don't have issues with the OPM contract. Um, I do, when it comes time to negotiating a contract with the architect, which I think is different from this, I do have some concerns regarding their fees and some other fees for some of the projects that are out there in the public domain. As, as it, that pertains to cost increases and their, their fee as a percentage with cost increases? Right, and just their fee in general relative to the fees of some other architects for like projects. Okay. Well, duly noted. Thank you. And I agree. I, I that did come up, and I think everybody was a bit uh, the sticker shock and the the increase in material costs, which, as we talked about, I've mentioned, uh, we've all had the discussion. These fee increases could be temporary, and we've seen lumber spike and then lumber fall, futures fall significantly. So there's probably, there's going to be a lot of movement in, in prices, right? Uh, and so right, on. right. And, and I just fundamentally have a philosophical issue with their fee being tied to price increases. increases in pricing. Their fee should be their fee, period. No um, so. so, Robin, to, the, to that point, so we're starting with the extension for the owner's project manager, which is our representative, right? The town right. And the idea is that then they will assist us with the renegotiation Perfect. of the art. Right. If right. the board has any feedback that they want to send me now, I can send that over um, to the, the OPM. And then we can also structure a way, whether it be a, you know, a session or some other way that we have this, the feedback or at least your questions answered before the, the, the contract is, the architect's contract is presented back to the board for your final. Perfect. Yeah. No, that's, I think that would be perfect. Thank you. I think that's a great idea. And Chris, I'd also, I'd also suggest that in, in, in the spirit of that, I don't know that it's necessary to have a, uh, an open board meeting discussion of it. I think we are all on the same page. And if you had Robin or I, or Bob or one of us, I, I, you know, as it looped into that conversation, I think that's something that we, that you could handle as a, as just, as the as a spokesperson for the board uh, okay. with regards to that so okay. i think that's just a good a, a good idea and it, it would I, I say that in the spirit of let's keep this process moving because i i do agree that this is a an important task and in, from a fiduciary standpoint it's critical for the town that we retain the continuity of the manager and the management team for this right okay so I, I would, uh, Robin. I I move that the board uh, authorize Chris to 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 negotiate. Is that the right word, Chris? Or, or? I've got the motion up on the on the screen, um, John. Okay. It's also in your in your packet if if that's helpful. I, I somehow when I gave the screen to Kate, the packet went with it. I'm not sure how to get the packet back. So that is. Robin, can you see this? Can you can you make the motion? Sure. Um, let me make sure I'm not on mute. Okay. 
I move to authorize the town administrator to execute all documents related to the contract for the owner's project management services, amendment number one, between the town of Dover and Collier's project leaders. Seconded, John Jeffries. All in favor, aye, John Jeffries. Aye, Robin Hunter. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chris. 1.3, John, Board of Selectmen updates. Perfect. Um, I, I've, the only comments I've made, uh, Christy, are you should be prepared for the, the phone calls of potential um, impact to the town of this, this la latest rainstorm, power outage, you know, tree damage, blah, blah, blah. That's definitely something that's going to be on, on people's minds, so. I appreciate that. Chief McGowan's reached out. Bobby's been in touch. Um, I'll continue to forward any updates uh, over to the board as I receive them, but um, I know they're on site with Eversource and we've got a good team in place. And what's the number? I, I know you guys were talking about it before I joined. How many houses are still without power? It's approximately 200. Okay. Uh, about seven o'clock this morning. All, all mostly around Farm Street? Uh, it's, it's kind of spread out throughout okay. town. Eversource is on site. Um, so I suspect that uh, that number is dwindling as we speak. Right. They're on site. They might as well spend the night. <laughs> <laughs> Back tomorrow. Um, well, we could have a Dover, a Dover dedicated crew. They'll be work tomorrow. <laughs> Robin, anything to add to this? No. Does the board want to review the uh, upcoming agenda or we've got a board meeting next Thursday night? Next Thursday night. And, um, and just to, to make sure, Robin, that w what you had asked about with regards to a, a meeting in August, I think we're, we can address that on uh, next Thursday night. But for right now, we're, I think we're good for next Thursday. Okay. All right. Uh, next item of the town administrator updates. Um, we've talked about the storm and we talked earlier about the latest uh, regarding the water um, discoloration issue. So I, I don't have anything uh, additional to add at this point. Chris, the only thing I have to add to the water issue is I, I shared with you personally, um, and I just, just make it public that I did call several residents that are on the same line specifically Draper Road, uh, Hartford Street, Saddle Ridge, Stagecoach, um, Cedar Hill, and Betsy Lane. And none of the people, I, I spoke with, with, five, with, with five homeowners and none of the five that I spoke with experiencing anything that was similar to d the Draper Road incident. So I view that as a isolated incident, uh, just based upon the very limited sample size that I went out to. So just wanted to um, report that, you know, we, we as we've, we've talked about this many, many times, we take this very seriously. I just want people to know that, you know, we, we went over and above the due diligence uh, process to make sure that this was a, an issue that wasn't townwide. Great. All right. And uh, the last item, John, is uh, we do have a, a consent agenda. Um, Thank you. Um, I move the following items in the consent, consent agenda to, as presented, the approval for the annual recycling committee request to submit grants to the Massachusetts Department of Revenue, to Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. Overview and certification of minimum eligibility criteria, municipality scale, small scale initiative, and recycling dividend programs. And then approve the one day liquor, special liquor licenses, all, all in 2021 for June 18th retroactively, July 3rd retroactively, the 9th, 10th, 10th, 11th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 24th, 29th, 30, 31 of July, August 6, 7, 13, 14, 20, 21, 26, 27, 28, and September 24th, we are clearly in 
wedding season, uh, summer party season, and the summer activity season, which I am very happy to see in this, the volume come back in these opportunities for the town. So I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Uh, all in favor, aye, John Jeffries. Aye, Robin Hunter. That's it. That's it. Um, thank you, Mona. Thank you, Kate. Thanks, Chris. Robin, very well done. Um, yeah, well, I think we should thank the staff for making this so easy. Like putting those things together is really, really helpful. And it's especially helpful because clearly we're all on the same page or simply just too lazy to come up with our own goals and objectives. <laughs> but I really do believe we're simply on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> we are volunteers the voice of robin hunter <laughs> uh, thank you all very much i move to adjourn the meeting i will second that thanks everyone greatly appreciate it can we get a vote sorry john. Oh, all in favor i john jeffries i robin hunter thanks kate thanks mona chris thanks everyone thanks for stay for safe doing this in your vacation day we we appreciate it it's not unnoticed my pleasure not a problem all right we'll talk soon thanks guys